Hey guys. How's it going? Coming in, coming in, coming in. It's going to be a fun live stream today, guys. We're going to be jumping inside of Unity and we're going to be working on these tasks today. We're going to work on our corrupted duck. <coughs> Whatever that means. I'll show you in a sec. <laughs> we're going to work on some balloons, uh, making sure they're poppable and breakable and that they launch goodies out of them. We're going to make some crate drops. We're going to work on some headshot mechanics and some ammo UI elements. So it's going to be really, really fun. By the way, I want to say a huge thank you to Holly Burns, Abram, Sean, Finnegan, and I think some of these are from two days ago. Leonardo L, Sammy A, and Jose R. Huge, huge thank you and welcome to the full-time game dev program. And by the way, if, if you're curious about full-time game dev, click the link in the description. It is still Black Friday. It's Black Friday for five more days. You're going to get 50% off full-time game dev, which is my massive, massive program that teaches you basically everything you need to know to start a game studio. And I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke up your butt. It really is an awesome program. I have 4,000 students worldwide, incredible reviews. And the cool thing about this program is not only are you going to learn Unity or you can pick Godot or Unreal, any of them, you can pick them. They come free with the program. But on top of that, you're going to learn how to actually go full time, like Lord Grimm here, which was one of my students, how to go full time, how to get funding from publishers, how to get funding from uh, Kickstarter, how to hit the Steam front page, how to get your Squarespace website to actually work. There we go. Um, it's great. It's a, it's a really cool program. It's freaking huge. And by the way, if you're a student, let us know that you're in the chat. Let us know what you think about the program. It would really mean a lot to me. I'd love to hear your thoughts, but click the link below 50% off. I believe there's 50 seats left, six days left. This is the biggest event of the year and it does support the channel, but more importantly, it does support your future. All right, let's jump on into unity. Let's go. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, really quickly, I just realized I need to add something to the description here. So I'm going to add that really quickly. That 2D game kit you guys saw just there is not in the description, so I want that to be there. So I will add that, <clears throat> there we go. Okay, that's in the description for you guys if you're interested in getting that 2D game kit. Okay, so I kinda wanted to show you guys a little a little something something here. This is our ClickUp that we use as a team. Um, we are currently in Milestone 3. We're preparing for Milestone 4. And we have a lot of bugs that have been addressed thanks to AJ, so AJ has cleared out all these bugs that are all ready to re for review. So I can clear out all of these bugs. But there are a few bugs here that Felipe and I are still working on. One of them being, again, this corrupted duck. I'm unsure, I am very unsure if our corrupted duck enemy type, <laughs> I don't think he works. Uh, for some reason, I don't think he's shooting. So let's just really quickly, let's fly into this level here and place our corrupted duck. So first off, we need to make sure we're baking our uh, shape here. So let's go ahead and add a nav mesh to our surface so that we can actually test this out. So we're going to do the current object hierarchy. We're going to not include ragdoll limbs. And we're going to use the physics colliders. And we're going to override the voxel size and we're going to bake. Okay, so now we can put our corrupted duck onto this area here and go ahead and test to see if he's working. He should shoot a shotgun, okay? So we're gonna type in sh our uh, walker shotgun. Okay, so here is our corrupted duck. Okay, there's our duck. And hopefully this little fella will actually shoot at us. If he's not shooting at us, we have a problem, okay? So let's go ahead and knock this element or this item off of our list, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play here and I'm going to turn the sound on for you guys just so you can hear a little bit here. All right. 
Where are you, buddy? There he is. Okay, so he's not moving for some reason. Okay, but he shoots, so that's good. All right. Okay, we also have another issue that I'm gonna to add to our list here. Let's open up our tasks and see if we can change this. Um, we also need to go ahead and fix the fact that enemies um, are absorbing or are receiving um, blood decals, which is, it just makes things look weird. And also our blood decals are not fading up walls. And they should, they should fade up walls, otherwise you get a really bizarre um, effect going up the walls. I don't know why he's not walking on this nav mesh. And I don't know why it's elevated like that. Let's, hmm, maybe override the tile size. No, I don't get it. Let's do 0.1. That's better. So he should run on that. We'll see. There he goes. Come on, bud. Okay, so you can see here blood is showing up on our duck. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is have an exclusionary layer on our duck um, or on our decal. So what we're gonna have to do here is open up our ultra pipeline. All right, come on in guys, come on in. Welcome if you're new to the stream. My name is Thomas Brush, I make video games and I also um, am an art director for our studio, Atmos Games. And I like to live stream every once in a while just to show you guys what we're working on and also teach you how to make games. By the way, check out Full Time Game Dev in the link in the description um, if you're interested in learning how to make games. Okay, so there is rendering layers here. When enabled, you can configure specific decal projectors to affect only specific objects. Okay, so if we go to our blood particles, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill our duck here and then pause it, and we're going to take a look at our blood layers and see why it's actually jumping or, or hitting our enemy itself. Come here. Okay, pause, and let's take a look here. So you can see the blood is showing up on our buddy here. So let's go to our decal. So I believe our decal is right here. Is that our decal? Yeah, let's take a look here. So we have our decal projector. If I turn that off, you can see it's changing, but it's also affecting our duck here. So why? Let's see our rendering layers. Rendering layers, light layer default. Okay, so, ah, light layer ignore default blood decal. Let's double check that. No, okay, I see. Light layer default. default. So that, is interesting. Uh, where are our light layers? This is so weird. Unity is so annoying sometimes. Things are so confusing. Um, where are our light layers? Does anybody remember this? Because um, for some reason it, I had it working and now it's just not. There we go. So there's our light layers. These are rendering layers, 3D, okay. Ignore blood decal. Okay, okay. So which, ugh, this is confusing. So we need to go to our duck here, and for some reason he's not. Hmm, I'm trying to remember. Ugh, I'm trying to figure this out. Sorry guys, one sec here. Light layer default. If we go to our UR, URP layers here, you can see we have light layer ignore default blood de decal. So if a enemy is set to, to a specific layer, it'll ignore it. So where do I go here? Just set it to ignore blood decal. Do I have one of those? No, there's nothing here. What about here? 
trying to remember where I did this. Is it in the ultra render pipeline? No. You're looking in the wrong place. It's in the skinned mesh renderer component. Okay. So our fella right here. There it is. Ah, yes. So I believe he's good. Okay. So for some reason, got it. Okay, we need to go through all of our enemies. Um, so we're gonna go to all the way to the base layer of our walkers. This is cool. So all of our enemies have a base layer and they have all these different um, potential meshes. And so we can go to this here and go to our graphics and we can set our renderer. Okay, that's correct. Yes, okay, so we're the teddy, the duck, the clown and the mermaid, they need to be set to this right here. Good, okay, so that might solve two of our items on our list. Okay, so let's go ahead and double check, guys. Um, we're gonna exit prefab mode. And now let's double check and see if this works. You guys ready to take a look? Good. Awesome. Okay. Great. So I think that works, but what we want to do is just double check that all of the meshes and guys, it's really important when you're making your game to do your very best. This is at least how I do things. Okay. So I like everything to be stored in one core prefab. And then we create variants of all the different kinds of enemies from this one core prefab. And so all of my enemy types are actually, the meshes are all stored in one and then these delete on load. Now what we'll probably do is end up deleting these in the various variants. But for now, I want them all stored here. So let's just double check that everything is set to the right, this right layer here, okay? Good, 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 good. All right. Let's see, make sure our mermaid, there's our mermaid. Okay, so she looks good too. Um, the mask. Ah, the mask is not set properly. So we need to go ahead and make sure our mask is set to, if they have this optional mask, we also want that to ignore the blood as well. Um, sweet, okay. Um, let's make sure we disable our mermaid here. And we have our duck. Okay, guys, so that task is done. Blood decals are not fading up walls. This is annoying, so I fixed this one. How many of you, when working on your, especially your Unity games, <laughs> how many of you have found yourself fixing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again? Um, that's just, well, par for the course. So if we go to our decals, you can see here that if we want, again, let's hit play and I'll show you. If we want our decals to fade up walls and not just go straight up walls for infinity, you have to add the fader, and that's not initially enabled in the shader. Um, so if I kill this fella here, let's go to our decal. I can't remember what the decal is called. That's why I want to enter play mode here. Um, so we have our decal, and we have our blood decal projector. And you can see here, angle fade. Does it even work? Oh, it is working, but for some reason, ah! So we had an issue during our when we actually did a build for Steam where these were showing up on the walls. But I think we're good. I'm not seeing the issue. Let's see here, let's go down, okay. Let's see what happens if I move it over here. Does it fade? Okay, it's not, f uh, well, it's having trouble with that. Hmm. Let's see here, what about the curtains? It's kind of fading, but it doesn't look great. But I guess it gets the job done. Let's see here. Okay, I think that's fine, I guess. Look at that, huh. Ah, uh, it uses IC. Hmm. I almost don't want it to fade at all. Maybe just very subtle. Does that make sense? Hmm. Let's see if this works. Let's 
Seems all right. It's not the greatest, you know? Hmm. Let's go to our, hmm. The fader is not enabled in the shader, but I believe, let's see, blood splatter. Um, ground projector. No, it's blood particles. Hit particles blood. There's our decal projector. Yeah, it's enabled. It would tell me otherwise. It would say, hey, this isn't enabled, but but we're good. Yeah, it's it's enabled. I mean, if we open up the shader, if we go to edit here, we could see angle fade works. Cro supports LED crossfade. Yeah, it's angled. Angle fade is ready to go. Okay, I was just seeing an issue, but it looks like we're good, guys. Okay, so let's go ahead to our tasks here and move on. Wow, we're knocking stuff out. Okay, enemies are receiving blood, ca blood decals. We fixed that. Blood decals are not fading up walls. Now, apparently we're good. This is a big one, okay? The headshot mechanics. This is difficult, okay? So basically, the problem I'm having here is that if we go to our enemy here, inside of our enemy, we have... a hot, I call it a hot spot, and it's a sphere collider here. And if I blow up this sphere collider, it should pop and kill the enemy, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and give ourselves the, we're gonna use a cheat code here. Let's see here. All right, we're gonna use our cheat code. Um, what's the cheat code? Oh, it's in the game manager, okay. So let's go to our game manager. And we're gonna make sure that we have all of our goodies enabled by default so that we can use all of our weapons and try out this headshot mechanic. So if we go to our game manager here, good. Um, let's see here, is demo build apply all cheats. Okay, so it's game manager variant. So we're just gonna make sure all the cheats are enabled. Um, apply all cheats, good. Let's go ahead and hit play here. Well, let's actually clear out our saves. And now we can test out all of our different weapons and see how the headshots are working with our default values. We can upgrade all of our weapons in this game, okay? Why did it do that? Hmm, we gotta go to our game manager here. For some reason it didn't load it or give us all of our cheat codes. Let's see here. Let's hit play again. All right. Why? Hmm. Okay, well, we'll just uh, use, what's the code? can't remember what AJ said it was. Okay. Well, we're just going to give ourselves the pistol, okay, guys? And we're going to test it out. So let's take our pistol here. The pistol, it's called Pistol Fast. It's basically just a um, pick up Pistol Fast. There it is. This weapon here um, is it's a good example of or it's sort of a, a good testing gun so that we can test out if the headshots are working properly. Because it's a very weak weapon. And so the way we're gonna make this game, you know, every genre is different, but for, for this game, a headshot is not one shot blows up the head. In this case, it's gonna require two from this gun, okay? It's a very weak gun. Whereas a Magnum, instant head blow up, right? Okay, so what we're gonna take a look at here is, well, let's throw in some pistol ammo. Pickup ammo pistol. Yay. Let's give ourselves some ammo and see how the headshot works. Currently, I believe it just blows it up, which is not good because it's just too easy. Yeah, we don't want that. Let's try it one more time. Let's, let's throw in some more, more ducks, okay guys? 
Let's throw in some more ducks. Do you guys want me to turn on some lo-fi? Anybody? Anybody want any lo-fi? Coming in, coming in. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you guys with us today. I'm having fun just making games. If you haven't uh, downloaded any of my free courses below or game kits below, there's a lot of stuff below that you can uh, use to learn how to make games full time. Um, and I know that that's kind of annoying. It sounds gimmicky. It's not like I, this is my job. This is what I do full time. Um, but I also teach about it. Um, so it's I, I run multiple businesses. One of my businesses is teaching about game dev, and the other one is actually making games. So this game is actually being published by by 3D Realms. Um, so I know I know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's take a look here. Um, we have these uh, ducks here, and again, let's double check here. Is one shot killing the duck's head? If that's the case, we really want it to be two. So let's double check. Yep, it is. It's fun, but it's too easy. It's kind of hard to hit even. It doesn't feel fair. Also, did you guys see that? One melee attack kills me. That's ridiculous. So let's add that to our tasks here. Um, <laughs> that's ridiculous. So let's go ahead and add that here um, to our task. We've got blood decals not fitting up walls, so we can kill those. Um, and we're just going to say one hit kill melee? <laughs> not sure what's going on there. Okay, so headshots. We have an issue here, guys. We're going to go all the way to our root. This is why it's so important to base all your enemies off of really one core enemy type. Okay, in this case, we have this hot spot. Okay, um, the problem with the, let's see here. And also it's, I don't even know if it's big enough. I'm kind of gonna make the radius a little bit bigger. So maybe something like 0.3. Um, it just, it, it feels like you're missing it and you shouldn't, but you can see here it says one shot kill. Okay, well, let's double check what that means. Let's go to the hot spot script here, open up Visual Studio and take a look at the C sharp and see exactly, okay, what, is it a conditional statement? Is there a multiplier? What's going on? Because I wrote this a long time ago. I don't remember what this means, honestly. I think this is maybe a, I haven't opened the script up in about a year and a half. So you might see some cobwebs and you might see some termites. So we'll see what's going on here. Oh, geez. It smells like an old attic. Okay, take damage. So if we see here, if it's, um, Let's look for that variable one shot kill. Okay, if it's one shot kill, the amount is a thousand. Otherwise, take damage at the amount. What is this? What is that? That is the delay, okay. So the amount value is being set by what? Here. What's amount? Take damage delay. Where is amount? Hmm. It's being, ah, yes. Okay, so we need to look for hotspot. We're gonna go to all entire solution and see where this is occurring. Because there's a this 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 function is being called from somewhere uh, inside of our script here, so we're gonna keep searching for it. Come on, surely not. Maybe it's hmm. Well, where's this being fired from? Take damage. Hmm. Wow, this is being fired from somewhere. Take damage is being fired from somewhere. Let's double check here and see what's going on. Um, let's keep going. It should find something. Man, what's going on with it? Uh, 
There we go. Okay. So let's type it in again, hotspot, and see where it's being being fired. Hotspot damage. Okay. Oh, interesting. Oh no, that's not good. Hotspot damage. Each weapon has their own hotspot damage. Does that make sense? What we need to have instead is we need to have a multiplier. Every weapon has a hotspot multiplier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this and we're going to multiply this times a hotspot multiplier. Okay? That doesn't exist yet. So what we're going to do is call this hotspot multiplier. By default, it's going to be one point. Well, let's think here. If the, if the pistol is firing at a damage value of let's say 50 and the enemy's health is, no, no, no. If it's, if it's 20, 25 and the enemy's health is 100, that means that it's going to take five shots to kill an enemy. But I want it to take two when you hit the head. Therefore, I would say the hotspot multiplier should be something like a multiply value of two. That's the theory. And in fact, I would argue this should not change, should it? It should be this way across all weapons, right? I think so. What do you guys think? What do you guys think about this? What do we think? Is that a good idea? All right, let's try it out. So we have our hotspot multiplier, multiplies it times two. In the event that the hotspot is set to one shot kill, then sure, it'll it'll blow up it'll, no, no matter what. So for example, if I put like a, a dynamite on the back of an enemy and I shot that, I would want that to be a one shot kill. But in this case, it's just a, a headshot. So let's double check here. So this in theory, I should be able to kill the bird in, well, let's double, let's look at our weapon manager here and see what the minimum value, because remember we can upgrade. So we have a min value for our fast pistol here. The min value is set to, Forty, and the max value is seventy. The Walker shotgun enemies have a health value of one hundred, whereas the Walker, the generic Walkers, they have a value of sixty. So actually, the Walkers, this is great. So the I don't know if this is normal for this genre of game, like a Half-Life Bioshock game, but some enemies you're not going to be able to kill their head, in, um, one shot, whereas easier enemies you will be able to. So I have the Walker shotguns, but then I also have the Walker, the regular ones. These are ones that are melee enemies. These, whoops, these fellas, you should be able to blow their head off no problem. Okay, so let's try it out. I don't think his I hit his head there. It looks like it's working. Okay, why isn't it working? Let's do a little debug. Y'all want to do a debug? Let's debug this. Um, we have our demo weapon. Demo weapon is the, it's still called demo weapon. We haven't renamed it, um, but this is the core class here. So if we take a look at our, what was it called? It was called hotspot multiplier. So this is the damage of the weapon times the multiplier plus any temporary multipliers as well. And then a headshot sound. Hmm, let's double check it here, okay? Debug dot log um, took damage what was the damage value well let's take a look here it's the weapon reference damage so it's gonna be let's say 20 
and then also multiply that times, in this case, it'll be two, which should be 40, right? So let's, uh, let's see if this works, okay? David says, hey, Thomas, today I completed your game manager section in your full-time game dev course. That's awesome. And by the way, thanks for joining. I hope it's um, been great. What do you think about the program, David? Do you like it? Let me know. And by the way, guys, I've hired David to give us a positive review. Obviously, I'm kidding. Okay, so let's look at our, our console here. Whoa, buddy, why are you coming through like that? Take damage, 10. What? Makes zero sense. Man. So for some reason, the damage value is 10 when I'm shooting the pistol. That makes zero sense. Looks like we got ourselves a glitch, my friends. If we go to our weapon manager, we could take a look here at our pistol. The pistol value for pistol fast, it looks like our minimum damage. Oh, it's set to five. We don't want that. What happened here? Why did it? I don't get it. Okay, well, let's take a look at our um, regular pistol, our magnum. The magnum value is 25. So what this means, what does this mean? It means that if the walker's health is 50, how many shots do I want this weak, the weakest weapon, how many shots do I want it to take to kill this walker? I kind of feel like four. I know that sounds like a unorthodox number, but there's a weapon upgrade system, so we want some room to, 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 to grow. So I think four sounds good. So that's 50 divided by four is what? I don't even know. Uh, what? what is 50? Thomas, you're an idiot. What is 50 divided by four? 12.5, okay? So we got 50 divided by four is 12.5, therefore, let's just give it a nice even 13. Now, the maximum value, the maximum upgrade value, so if I max out my, my pistol, I feel like I want it to be able to kill an enemy in three shots, okay, a walker. I know, it's not that big of a difference, um, but I think that Two is just too much. Maybe, I don't know. I just feel like two is too much or too too powerful for a, for a pistol like that. Um, maybe we could do five shots. What do you guys think, okay? Does this make sense, guys? We have a minimum value and a maximum value to what we can upgrade this fast pistol. Again, the, the, the fast pistol is like a really weak pistol. If my enemies, if my walker enemy, so it's one of the first encountering enemies you encounter, I need your help here, guys. My first enemy I encounter is basically a, 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 a dumb zombie. How many shots of the pistol should it take in the chest to kill this, this zombie? Five shots? Okay. Okay, so 50 divided by 5 is 10. That wasn't a fart, I swear. Okay, I can't replicate it. Okay, maybe it was. All right, so let's see here. Minimum damage value should be... Why does it keep changing? I don't understand. Now it's set to 13. What? Am I missing something here, guys? Wasn't it five earlier? Or did I already change it? I don't get it. Oh, I did, I just changed it. Um, 10. Um, how many shots? Three. So 50 divided by three is what? 50 divided by three is what? 16.6. .6. So guys, by the way, this is how me and my team decided that we were going to do balance. Um, we wanted minimum and maximum values, and we wanted to be able to change these values in one big weapon manager scriptable object that allows us to balance out the game and it affects everything globally there's we don't have to go into each enemy or each weapon it's just all in the weapon manager so aj created this system huge round of applause to aj really cool system buddy i really really love it by the way aj or felipe if you're in the chat let me know so that you guys can say hello all right let's hit play here All 
All right, let's try it out, guys. What does this mean? Well, let's test it out. It should be five shots to kill a walker. Okay, it didn't do it. What the heck? I don't get it. That's not right. Something's wrong here. Oh, Thomas, use your brain, dude. What's going on? Minimum max, minimum value of 10. If I'm hitting you at 10, uh, it's because his health is 60. 60. We want five shots, right? Really should be 60 divided by four, shouldn't it? This is a this is a painful thing. I'm not gonna lie. I don't like doing this. 15. Uh, value of 15. All right. So we're gonna do minimum value of 15. Now divide by four, or I'm sorry, divide by two. Now. I know this sounds weird. It's just you want to be able to. It's not gonna go over the max value, so you have to do two instead of three, right? Uh, so it's uh, 60 divided by three. 20. So it's got a max value of 20. So that means I can, the minimum value is 15. 15 times five shots is 60. Or no, it's like 75. My brain. Okay, let's try this out. Five shots. Why are you going through that, man? Two. Three, four, 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 five. Good, okay. One, two, three, four. That was like three. Hmm. One, two, three, four. Okay, so I got killed from a melee attack. Um, Okay. All right. That feels good to me. Um, I want to double check now with the headshots. If the multiplier is two, that means it's going to take three shots to get a headshot. So I kind of feel like it needs to be like set to three. So it's basically, again, minimum value is 15. 15 times three is what? Uh, 45. So two of those will kill, will kill that, the enemy. Um, so let's just go ahead and set this value for the hotspot multiplier. We're going to set it to three. I don't know. Give it a shot, guys. I don't know. So that means that the shotgun will always blow their head off. The other shotgun, the pump action, is lighter. That one might need to be custom. Cause I just don't, I don't want the pump action to be so easy to blow off somebody's head. I think that's just too easy, but maybe I'm wrong. I mean, if I put a pump action shotgun to your head, what would happen? Um, so let's hit play here and take a look. Okay. One, come here. One, one, uh, that, that's fine actually. I think that worked. Okay, I keep getting killed by something. Um, is it the ducks? Let's go to Walker Pistol. This is another task I have to do. Let's take a look at our Walker Pistol here. Um, what is his hurt box? This hurt box is being activated when they, when they melee attack you. And currently it's set to 20. But I am, I die so quickly. So let's double check here. Maybe it's just my health's going down. I don't know. Um, I, I feel like the headshots are good though. So far, so good. Let's just test one of the ducks. Okay. Let's test one of the ducks and see if it's hurt, how their melee is affecting me and how their bullets are affecting me. Cause it sure feels like I, and I haven't looked at their values in a while. We're, by the way, we're doing balancing right now. That's what we've been working on. And so, we haven't looked, we haven't balanced this game yet. So we haven't really looked at these values in a long time. And so we're not quite sure uh, if, if it's consistent. Um, so let's go to our Walker. 
Let's take a look at our Walker pistol first. These are 80. So these will these will require three headshots, I think, which is fine. Um, there he is. Look at that. Didn't even have a headshot. Why do the teddies not have a headshot? That is the mystery that I've been having for the last year. Sometimes they just don't work. And by the way, guys, I'm not just randomly diagnosing stuff or just solving problems. All of these are kind of interconnected. Um, so let's take a look at his head here. There it is. But are there any other objects that are in the way? <gasps> no. Is there anything here that's blocking us? Hmm. I'm gonna make it really big and we're just gonna see. Let's make it like that big. Where are you, buddy? Oh, good, it works, okay. And that, that made sense, actually. Which was 15 times four is 60? No, no, 15 times two is 30. And 30 times, how many did that take, four? Yeah, I think that makes sense, right? Whatever, I, I really do think it makes sense. Um, cool, okay. So that works, it's just kind of small. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to all of our, our core walker here. And we're just gonna make sure this head is bigger cause it's just, we're gonna do point, point 0.35 maybe. Yeah. And I also noticed that the spine uh, box here is really small. We're just gonna pull that out. And this is gonna uh, affect every humanoid in the game. Um, I don't know why his arms are that big, but it's fine. Let's take a look, guys. Make the headshot sound so you know. Yeah, the, there's a headshot sound. Um, okay, let's try one more time. Here we go. Hmm. Why? It's not fair. As a gamer, I would be annoyed. Hello, Anders Hedge. How are you, buddy? Look at that. It doesn't, it won't, it, his head won't blow up. Maybe his hands are in the way. Oh, maybe. Um, we're gonna hit play one more time and we're gonna see if that hotspot is, is being deactivated for some reason. Uh, no, every other limb is, is set to trigger, okay? Um, because we don't we don't want there to be a ragdoll effect while he's running. Hey buddy, whoa! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Dude, that's not fair. Come on. Okay. I, I let's fix this, uh let's fix this. <laughs> um we have this and we have that. Uh this is not set to static, that's why. And then these are all gonna be these are all inside of this here. So actually the nav mesh surface, we can I believe we can clear this out here. Yeah, it's just a pain of making a 3D game. Anybody know the feeling? Dealing with all these nav mesh surfaces? 
Let's go to our, our, our parent here for the main lobby. There he is. Okay, so the main lab, it, there's a there's a nav mesh, so we're good. Um, Charlie is screaming at me. The head doesn't need to be a box. Okay, here we go. There he is. Let's see here. Let's take a look at his hotspot and see if it for some reason got disabled. Nope, it's not set to trigger. It's small again. So there's that. I don't know why it's small. So that's an interesting thought. But the rigid body is set to kinematic, so we're good. Um, which we want. So, let's see here. Look at that. I can't reload. Did that blow his head up? It did not. Okay, so for some reason, we're not hitting his head. Okay, so we're gonna take a look here and see what's going on. Hit oh, hotspot multiplier. There's always these glitches, man, these small little glitches that randomly show up in the game's development. They don't make sense. Um, okay, uh, so look at the conditions here. If it hits damageable entity and it does not equal null, um, so if it's hitting the damageable entity, that's all you gotta do is this. If it's hitting the damageable entity, and mm. oh oh i figured it out <laughs> look at this here we go look it's above his freaking head see duh i don't know why that got put that way but we're gonna fix it this is our capsule collider for our walker Okay, he's good, but the walker shotgun. Ah, it's the walker pistol. Bring, that's all we gotta do. For some reason he was being that way, look at that. Okay, so we need to just go into all of our freaking enemies and make sure that they're all set up properly. That's kind of annoying, but whatever. What about you? You're good. 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 What about you? You're good. 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 Okie dokie, guys. Good, we've got this. Ready? So we should eventually see his head blow up. Good. Okay. Now, personally, do I feel like I should be able to kill that enemy with two shots in the head? I think it's okay. I don't know if the math actually worked out what we did earlier, but it feels okay. It's fine. Um, I feel like the walkers, they should get killed in one shot if you shoot them in the head. Um, no, that's good, man. I think that's good. For some reason, Unity is slowing down. It's, I, it does this every day. It starts to slow down for some reason. Um, I don't like how big I made their heads though. Makes the headshots a little too easy. So let's just make it 0.3. And overall, hmm, maybe 0.28. Yeah, because I was making it bigger because I didn't fully understand why that was happening. And now we know, okay. Okay, so we've got our, our walker headshot working or our enemy headshots working properly. Um, but now what we want, look at this, Unity is freaking slow, dude. We're gonna close it out. Actually, you know what you probably need to do? Is just open up a new scene. I don't know why, but whatever. Let's open it up and see. OK, 
Okay, Unity is still kind of slow. It's not as bad. Um, let's go ahead and do some more testing here, guys. Um, first off, let's hit play and take a look. Am I going to change the code back to does not equal null? No, because that's what that means. Maybe I just haven't coded in a while. If hit.transform, yeah, if it has a damageable entity, that's all that means. If it has a hotspot, that's all that means. Um, cool, okay. By the way, those of you just joining us, just remember you can join full-time game dev, 50% off. This is my massive program taught by somebody who's actually making games full-time. Check it out below, 50% off. There are 50 seats left. You're gonna learn everything I know about making games. That includes the technical, Unreal, but we also teach Godot and and we teach, I teach Unity. There's uh, two other lecturers who teach Godot in Unreal. And then I also teach the business side, marketing, right? How to hit the Steam front page. How to get six figures with just a demo. Yes, it is possible. It's not that crazy. How to get six figures with a Kickstarter campaign. I've done all of this. Check it out below. Okay. Whoa, Unity's just frozen. It's like, um, and my PC is like about to take off. Let's close Unity, guys. Woo! It is slow. You want to know what the real problem is? The real culprit of this slow PC is freaking Visual Studio. Did you know that you need basically a spaceship and a quantum computer and diesel fuel to run Visual Studio? Did you know this? It's insane. Okie dokie. Let's open this up, guys. Let's see what we got. Man, we're making progress today. I feel good. I feel like we're making a lot of progress. Alexa, fan on. Okay, let's see. It's still effing slow. What on earth? Let's hit play and take a look. I don't have time for this. We got progress to make. And Unity's deciding, you know what? I want to be slow this quarter. It's not bad. Okay. So let's go ahead and test out some new enemies. What do we have here, guys? One hit melee? Well, let's double check the duck here. I'm going to disable any of the... One of the... Uh, Dialog triggers. We're gonna just disable all these here. Just so Mr. Twister doesn't talk to us. Walker, let's see how painful it is to get hit with a melee. Because my suspicion is the melee is like hitting us by like a power of 50. What's this set to? That's 20. Walker deadlier. This is our runner now, who are you ah oh, hmm let's take a look at our hurt box eh that one's set to 35 not bad um what about our walker shooter or our walker pistol the runner's hurt box is set to 25 the walker pistol this is our teddy bear his hurt box is set to what? 20. Okay, what about the Walker shotgun? 20. So am I am I getting hurt? How bad does it hurt? Let's take a look. Here we go. Okay. 30, 10. Okay, it's not bad. Hello. Okay, what about getting hurt by the bullets themselves? Well, let's take a look at the projectile. The projectile's value is set to 30. Do you think that's fair, guys? We have 100 health. If I happen to get hit by two of these, I just lost 60 health. Is that fair? Poll, yes or no? 
There are three projectiles that are shot out of the shotgun of the duck. Sometimes you get hit by one. Sometimes you can get hit by three. If I get hit by three, I'm going to take damage of 90. Is that fair? Y'all are just babies. Okay, we'll do 10. So if you get hit by it, if you get hit close range, you're going to get 30 damage. That means that four four close range shots are going to kill you. I feel like that's not good enough. I feel like it needs to be something like if you're close range and you get shot twice, you're done. So I kind of feel like it needs to be 20. 20 times 3 is 60. Ah, let's do 16. So 16 times 3 is Thomas use your brain. 32 is that 48? How about 17? <laughs> oh, geez. Can I type in here? Can I do 17 times? One of you said this earlier. How do I do math in the... Can I do it here? 17 times 4 equals... How do I do math inside of Unity? Does anybody have a calculator inside of Unity? 35 is the sweet spot. Sweet spot, please trust me. 35 what is the total? Just like in code? In the field itself? What are you talking about? Really? I can do that? <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, that's awesome. So what was I doing? Oh, well, I want the enemy to basically die if he's at close range twice. I feel like that's not fair, though. Yeah. So what's 100 divided by 3? 33.3. Then 33.3 divided by 3. 11.11 .11 is our damage. That means that if you get shot three times at close range, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Puddle, I agree with you. Okay, Nicholas. Jeez. Nicholas is such a know-it-all. I'm just kidding, Nicholas. Thank you for your help, buddy. All right, let's do this. Shoot me. Shoot me. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to get hit close range because he'll melee you. So my theory is we need to just make this 15. Nice, even 15. And that's that. Vesa is such a know-it-all. Good grief, Vesa. You think you're so smart. Jeez. One... Okay, that was 15. 70. It's kind of easy to avoid. fine. Doesn't need to be perfect. We're not balancing for gold master. We're balancing for alpha. Who knows the difference between, I know this is lame because, I, well, I didn't know these terms, okay, when I was younger, when I was just starting game dev. We have alpha, we have beta, and we have gold master. Does anyone want to explain the differences? Yeah, I think 20. I think 20 is good, man. Now let's take a look at the, the let's take a look at the pistol projectile. Oh, that was great, Thomas. Did you hear how fast I said that, guys? Let's take a look at the let's let's take a look at the pistol. Let's take a look at the pistol projectile. Let's take a look at the pistol. Man, that's tough. 
Damage is 10. Ah, man, you know, I just don't know if that's enough. All right. Ugh. Never heard of gold, Master. Make it strong and scary. I agree. I really do. I think it should be pretty tough. Like, I shouldn't be able to survive like that. I agree with you. Let's make it, let's, let's set it to 20. That's ridiculous. He should be able to kill me pretty quick. I mean, if I'm running around in a lobby with a duck that has a shotgun, I should die pretty quick. What do you guys think? I'm cool. I'm cool. This duck should be able to quack some skulls. Yeah, that felt good. The spread from what it looks like is very easy to avoid, so I don't think it would be insane in an issue if the damage was kept as it is since you can easily maneuver around. Yeah, I kind of feel you. I kind of feel you. So we're going to keep that as is. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the pistol. Uh, the Walker pistol the Walker pistol and By the way guys, why are these names so generic who knows why all of my enemies have incredibly generic names? Who knows there is an answer I'm gonna make you zero by the way <sighs> Don't do that Thomas Anybody know? So you can rename the enemies if you want to. That's right. Oftentimes, we name our enemies based on some creative idea like teddy bear. Or you might even go further. Hug a huggy. Or a um, um, Jimmy. The problem is you're going to change the name. You're going to change the name. Whether you like it or not, you change things. And so you want to keep things very generic so that it's uh, very simplistic for your team to understand and for you to understand in the future. Yeah, let's take a look at how hard it is to avoid one of these guys. I should, I should die pretty, pretty easy if there's one of these enemies. Ooh, he's brutal. The pistol guys are brutal. I love that. I love how difficult that is. The shotgun guys are, are just too easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to projectile shotgun. This has too much of a spread. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change move speed random multiplier. Uh, we're gonna make it 0.9 to 1.1. It's just, he's, he's too, it's too slow. This guy's great. I think he's scary and I love him. I love him a lot. If we go to our walker shotgun here, now watch this. This is going to be tough. Well, yeah, when you have them, when you have three of them, it's tough. Yeah, but I feel like if you even encounter one and you don't have an enemy, you, you shouldn't be able to avoid them that so easily. Here we go. The target offset's a little high, isn't it? If we take a look at our Walker shotgun, yeah, I feel like 0.9, that's the move speed. Target offset random adder, oh! Okay, that's fine. What we had was fine. Um, it's the adder. So it's a randomized uh, target offset adder. I believe that's just a max value. So it really should be like one. And why do I, by the way, a lot of you are like, why does he use the word adder? Because you need to distinguish between, is it a multiplication or is it an, addi an addition? Um, it's really important to know whether something's being multiplied or added. 
when it comes to a, 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 like a float that's influencing an equation. So I like to clarify them in the, in the name of the variable. That's better. But the off, the Y um, target offset is a little high. Yeah, that feels good. Yeah, also, <clears throat> that's fine, I guess. Um, we don't want to go too crazy here. I know you guys have a lot of ideas, but um, I don't um, I don't want to add too many ideas because we got alpha build being due on in two days. So. Okay, one hit melee, good. Ammo UI. Let me, let me remove these. One hit melee. Delete. Headshot mechanics, we're good. Crate drops. I think we're actually good with crate drops. I'm actually gonna remove that. Balloons don't drop anything. So let's take a look at that. And also the corrupted duck is good. Look at this, guys. We're making progress. What do you think? Let's go over to our balloons here and see if they're dropping something, eh? <sighs> Okay, so there's our breakable object. Can it drop anything? It can drop coins with a chance of drop of 0.1. Come on, man. Make it 0.8. That's ridiculous. What about this one? Maybe 0.5, maybe 50-50 chance of a balloon dropping some cash. Do you know what I mean? Now let's see what our coin pickup is. Yeah, it's just some cash. For some reason, I have a suspicion that this is not going to work, but let's double check. Um, we want the balloons to be, uh, we want to incentivize the player to break every balloon. Now, I, how many of you can give me a, a succinct answer and I expect something that's intelligent and something that is smart and something that is brilliant? How many, how many of you can let me know in the chat why Hollow Knight does not have droppables come every once in a while out of the grass. Can anybody answer that question? And I'll be honest with you, I don't know the answer. Because I, if it were me, I would have made it so that every, like, there's a 20% drop of a coin or something from the grass. Does anybody know? Okay, game balance is fine. I. Let's 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 some, let's get more specific. I need to know the answer to this. Infinite money glitch, huh? Well, what if they save? I guess the grass doesn't save in Hollow Knight. But don't people like to farm? I love farming. Hmm. Anyway, what are we doing? Ah, uh, yes. And let's go ahead and throw our axe into the ground. Knife pickup. We still haven't renamed it Axe, but there's our knife. If you always expect it, it isn't a reward. Incentivizing money in combat. That's good, I like that. I told you, it's not working. Yep, I knew it. Come here, boy. Do you guys feel like that was really difficult to use the axe? I kind of like it though, because you get to upgrade, you know? Hmm. It makes killing enemies less meaningful. Interesting. It doesn't want to tempt the player with making the game a chore. That's a good, that's a really, really thoughtful uh, response. Um, game dev goodness, really good. That was a really like succinct, clear, simplistic, but effective way to write a sentence. You should consider writing more. Maybe you do. Chance of drop, 0.5. There's our drop of prefabs. Look, pfft, what? There's a checkbox here. 
I want them to drop objects and I want to set it to 0.1. Therefore, there's a 10% chance that a balloon is going to drop you some cash. I like it. I want to I want to pop all the balloons now. Look at this. It's like, wow. Let me pop the balloons all day. Look at this. Oh, yummy. Wait. Good grief. All right, guys, I got a controversial question for you. Does free will exist? Go. Now, let's try again. Does random exist? Who believes that random is a real thing in real life? It's a genuine question. I'm not trying to be snarky. Does random exist in real life? Sometimes when I press E to loot, nothing happens. Oh my goodness. I can't believe it. We've got a 50-50 disagreement here. You guys think random exists? Someone please explain that to me. I'm being serious. Someone explain to me why random exists. Now, this is outside of the context of some kind of entity or supernatural force, AKA a God, that can generate random outside of this time-bound dimension. I want to hear it. Because I actually do believe in random. But that's because I believe in God. Because God is outside of this current system. You have to, in my opinion, you have to have something outside of this current system to generate random. Because random, random in my opinion, is a miracle. Random has to be a miracle. It cannot work in our current dimension, in my opinion. Because it can't, it, by the way, random does not exist here. This right here, mathf.random, that does not exist. It's not random. It is not real. It's an algorithm. There's no such thing as random. Reed Peterson says, but rolling dice, that's not random. Random is, is uh, the implication of random is that literally, it's, I mean, it's random. It, it has no source. It's just random. But of course, it's not random. It's predetermined by the motion of your hand. Just because you didn't have control of your hand doesn't mean it's random. Here we go. Look at this. Look at the chat just going bonkers. Okay, so what do we got? Um, yeah, that feels good. Every once in a while you get some cash. Um, I like it. <laughs> oh my goodness. There are, there, are, there are machines that can predict coin flips because they are not truly random. Bingo, if you can predict it, it's not random. But I do believe in random because I believe in God. I believe in the unmoved mover. I believe in the thing outside the system. Some, something outside of the con confines of even logic. That's the only thing that can create random. You cannot generate random. Well, Anders Edge, I'm not saying God is random. I'm saying the only thing that could generate random is God. Because if you say, if you say that God can't generate random, then you know what that means. You're limiting God. How can you limit God when he's outside, outside of the logical context that we understand? If, if, if the concept of God is it's the thing that created this dimension, then you're basically saying it has no limits, especially the limit of an update loop. Like if you, have a, if you have a limit of an update loop, that means he's not limited by point A to getting to point B. 
he doesn't have that limit. So he's allowed to break, he just can break the whole system. NS Plays is like, what is going on? Um, okay, guys, what are we doing? But no, random does not exist in the context of Visual Studio. Of course it doesn't. How could it? What kind of algorithm out there is actually random? How could that even make sense? Oh, what's next on our list, my friends? Balloons. Well, we got the balloons done. Yay! And then the next thing we want to do is we have fairy wings. Yes, you heard me right. We have fairy wings. Let's go ahead and get our fairy wings set up. So, uh, um, pick up, double jump, bring! Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that's the wrong one. Pick up, dash. So the midair dash is fairy wings. This game is all based on various creepy, corrupted Disney tropes. Okay, ammo UI is left aside. What? Yeah, yeah, that's all we got. Charlie says, but dice. Nope. This is an interesting question. For those of you who believe in God, let's, let's discuss what Wownami sa is saying. Wownami is saying God can't contradict himself. I, want, I don't believe he would contradict himself because I believe in a specific kind of God, right? But why do you think that he can't contradict himself? Does that make sense? Why do we believe that God can't, can't contradict himself? I don't believe he would but I don't believe he, I, I don't know if I don't think he can't. Reed Peterson says, you can't be what you are not. It's interesting. So God was predefined. That one is hard for me. God is predefined. So God is, meaning he never was and he never, he's not in the future and he's not in the past. He just is. He is predefined. That one's hard for me. So like, for example, God is love or God is light. It means that his, his defined variables were written somehow. And that's hard for me. Um, why, why is it that this infinite eternal being had, was written with these properties? It's fun. These are fun questions and they're not particularly profound. You know, you're going to get these kind of questions from Socrates or Plato or sure Thomas Aquinas. You're going to get these questions from, um, Marcus Aurelius. They're, they're, they're normal questions. Um, they're a lot of fun. Okay. So remember this guys, we want our fairy wings to have a UI element. So we're going to go to our UI here. And by the way, guys, the UI is going to be updated. It's kind of crap right now. Okay, Asmist, you're actually saying something heretical. I don't know what faith you subscribe to, and maybe you don't. But if you're a Catholic or a Christian, that's actually considered heretical, um, saying that God chooses his nature. So when it says God is love, you're saying God actually isn't love. He chose to be love. So... You're saying that it is required that God is an abstract, sort of aimless entity, and then chose to be something. And I don't feel like that's accurately defining at least the Christian Judeo God. And by the way, I don't have an opinion about any of this. This is hard for me. Because I look at everything from like a game dev perspective and I'm like, so you're telling me that God had predefined variables that doesn't work for me. And then I go, okay, so maybe God was completely not predefined and he decided to write his own variables and then hit start. Well, God didn't hit start. He just is. So it's, it just doesn't, God doesn't work within the context of an update loop. 
Um, it's really, <laughs> it's really difficult to, 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 to wrap your head around. Um, okay, so the collectibles here. Um, we have our grapple hook. Let's uh, go ahead and add our, our background here so we can take a look. We have a grapple hook. We have the mid-air dash boots. These are wrong. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in wings. Whoa, what is going on here? We are all pre human prefab variants. Yes, we are. Let me ask you guys a question. This is another really fun one. This one might make your brain hurt. <clears throat> is God allowed? This is hard, and I'm not, I'm not saying what I believe here because I don't have an opinion. Is God allowed to be evil? So is it okay for God to be evil? Yes or no? Go for it. And this is all coming from a game dev perspective, isn't it? If you think about your game and you think about your creation, think about what you're allowed to do in the context of your characters you create. <laughs> oh, I love it. There's so many different ideas. Evil is a human construct. Interesting. We've heard that one from Cosmic Skeptic. Cosmic Skeptic has some reasonable arguments, or at least I enjoy watching Cosmic Skeptic. I don't agree with Cosmic Skeptic, but I, I appreciate his arguments. Let's type in butterfly here and see what we get. Okay, there we go. So we're going to make this the icon for when we collect our fairy wings. Human is a human construct. To say yes means someone had to have created God. That is really interesting. I like that Zion, e one, Zion 01. That's a really interesting thought. I like it. I don't know what I think about it. So this is why, in my opinion, if you want to argue against the, the existence of a God, you might be... It's not effective to say, well, God, why did he create uh, an evil world? I say, that's not an argument against God existing. That's an argument against God's personality. Or let's say you can argue against the Christian Judeo God and say, I don't believe in that God because it doesn't make moral sense. But it doesn't argue against the, create, the, the actual idea of an intelligent designer. Do you guys know what I'm saying? Okay, so there's our butterfly. Let's open that up in, in Unity here. Tozik says, God is a human construct. Interesting. I find it difficult to believe the world was just... Now, it's not necessarily the world that I have trouble believing came out of nothing. I have trouble believing that the update loop started on its own. Guys, somebody tell me how the update loop could start on its own. And some of you might be curious, what is an update loop? What are you talking about? I'm talking about the, the ticker that starts time, where we can start reading the physical laws. Where, how did that start? Does anybody know? What's the explanation for the start of the construct of, let me try this really quick. Watch my finger. What, what, oh, I can go from here to here. The idea that you can go tick, 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 tick. Who invented that? Where did that come from? Was it always there? Who, who started the update loop? Because by God, I think we're in an update loop. Literally, what I just said, I mean literally. So that's, guys, that's why in my, in my estimation, when I think about Socrates or Plato, or Marcus Aurelius, when I think about all of these philosophers who just stood the test of time, they all believed in the logos. They all believed in something outside of this dimension that started the ticker. Who started that? So that's why, I to, I, for me, it's, it's easier to believe in a god. Okay, so we've got the wall run boots here. 
We're gonna shift that up a little bit. These are not wall run boots. Wait, no, Thomas. Hang on, y'all. Let's hit apply here, but this is wrong. We gonna, we're gonna duplicate this to a new document. And we're gonna go back in time. Okay, there we go. So those wall run boots are correct. We need to bring this over, and this is going to be a totally new sprite. And we, 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 where can we put this here? Where can we put this? Let's turn this off here and see if there's any spots to put this. Maybe here. Look at this. Great conversation, guys. Maybe it's not a who, but a what. I mean, sure. We're not, we're not talking about, you know, the, the belief in Jesus here. We're just talking about the, the idea of the logos. The, the, the mind. And everybody, everybody says, well, it, Thomas, if you say there's a logos, then somebody, something had to create the logos. Not necessarily. The, the, the concept of the logos is the unmoved mover. The, the concept of the logos is there's got to be something outside of this dimension of the update loop. Something outside of the update loop. Oh, wait. Something outside of the code base. Something outside of the server that decided to turn the update loop on. You can't have non-existence if there isn't anything to compare it against. That's interesting. Interesting. I like it. Okay, so that's our wall run boots. 680 by 248. You know what's funny, guys? You can say with your mouth that you don't believe something, but you always behave as if you do. Isn't that interesting? Okay, that's on the right side, that's on the right side, so this needs to be on the right side as well. It's not perfect, but it's fine. So we're going to call this, um, and that's, I'm not saying that's 100% true, I just think that that's an in interesting observation that I'll say things, I believe X, Y, and Z about the world, then I'll act differently. Doesn't that mean that I don't actually believe that? Okay, this is UI. What do we call this? I guess midair dash is fine. Hit apply. So we got our midair dash. That looks good. We're going to go to our, ah, oh yes, we can just do it right here, actually. Uh, save, good. Bradley Smith says that's called cognitive dissonance. Yeah, and I think we all have it, don't we? You can say all day that you believe X, Y, and Z or don't believe X, Y, and Z. But if you behave differently than what you believe, then perhaps you don't actually believe it at all. That's something I think about all the time. I question that all the time about myself. Okay, so let's go to our midair dash. What do we got? Come on, Thomas, where are you, buddy? Okay, it's right here. Bing! And the collect sound, we're gonna do dash. So this right here. So that is the wings sound. We're going to apply that and let's just double check and make sure it works, okay? But if we admit our ignorance, we can't say God exists or not. Sure. I mean, I, I, I agree with that. that. No one can prove anything like that. But my problem with that is that just being, just thinking out loud here. My problem with that way of thinking is that it, then there's a lot of things that you shouldn't do at all because you can't know for sure about certain things. My, my opinion is I'm just going to decide to believe certain things based on personal evidences and also just experiences. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I just, I've got 70 years or maybe even maybe maximum 50 years left in my life, 60 years left in my life. I'm just going to look at kind of what's in front of me and go, I think, I think there's probably a God. Yeah, probably. So, and just live that way and not let it ruin my, my day. That's just the way I think. Okay, so let's, try, let's grab these fairy wings. You guys ready? Ooh, that was a little too loud. So let's go ahead and download... By the way, guys, if you're just joining us, just remember this video is sponsored 
by Full Time Game Dev. Full Time Game Dev is my massive program. Check it out below. Um, and oh, by the way, tomorrow I will give you a shout out. Tomorrow, if you join, I always do that at the beginning of all my live streams. 50% off, six more days left. You're gonna learn everything I know about starting a game studio. And not only that, going full time with six figures with just a demo. I know it sounds like a gimmick, but check out the curriculum below and you'll find out that it's not. I actually teach not only about Unity and there's also Unreal and Godot courses as well, but also the business side. Check it out below, six days left. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at All right. Yeah. <laughs> Bradley says, I go on gut feeling. Most of the things we do in life are gut feelings, right? Um, I've never seen, I've never personally seen the surface of the sun. I've never personally seen even the first surface of the sun through a telescope. Has anybody seen the surface of the sun through a telescope? Anybody? Let's type in chimes and see what we get. We need to sign in. Hold on. This is a genuine question. Has anybody seen the surface of the sun through a telescope? Yes or no? Has anybody seen it? I'm going to sign in really quick, guys. Give me just a sec. Genuine question. I'm not trying to be facetious. Um, no. Okay. Yes or no? Go with me here. I like that. That's so dumb sounding, but we're going to do it after three beers. Okay. So how do you know, let me ask you the next question, guys. How many of you know why, how many of you know what the surface of the sun does look like? Say, yes, I know, or no, I don't know. How many of you know what the surface of the sun looks like? I do. I know what it looks like. I haven't seen it, but I know what it looks like. Okay, so everybody knows. Everybody knows what the surface of the sun looks like. Yet you've never seen it. Okay, who can answer why you know what the sun, who knows why? Why, don't say science, why do you know? You know that the surface of the sun is speckled and looks like lava. Why do you know that when you haven't seen it? Okay, paid monkey says evidence. Okay, but you haven't seen it with your eyes. So, I know, hold on, I'm getting somewhere. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to get somewhere. You've seen pictures, oh, pictures. Good, okay, that's what I'm getting at. You have faith in the pictures. My point is that everybody trusts something above them, right? I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying the pictures are wrong. <laughs> like, I believe the pictures. It, did you hear what I just said? I believe the pictures. So everybody has, has, a, has some sort of construct of people they trust. Right? So a lot of stuff comes down to just you believe this source and you believe that source and you believe that source. And sometimes you don't even know why you do. You just do. So what's my point? That you can't trust NASA? No. My point is that we pick and choose who we trust. And so things do come down to trust. Okay, we're going to call this jingle. And actually, let's get a, a, a wing flap as well. I don't think what I'm saying is that controversial. I really don't. I think it's, it's common knowledge that you, you don't know everything. You, you know maybe 1% of what you believe. Like you, 1% of what you know is from personal experience. The other stuff, you just put your, your trust in certain sources. It's just normal. I think that's a normal way. That's just the way the world works. Oh, good. I like that sound. It has no surface. 
Okay, so Lenter says that's not controversial. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is great, this sound. I love this. So, guys, we're making a sound effect for these wings when you collect them, okay? Here we go. Paste. Come on, Tom. So what's the point here? My point is that um, to say that you don't believe in, to say that you don't have belief, you just have facts, it's never fair to say that because nobody lives that way. Nobody lives that way. Now, you can, you can become really, really sure about the textbooks you read and who you trust, and you can really dig in and look and see if they're valid. That's, of course. But at the end of the day, you are just building a foundation for your trust as opposed to knowing for certain your facts. So I think, I think that's a really fun conversation to have. I love this stuff, by the way, guys. This is, I love this stuff. It doesn't make me mad. I enjoy it. Here we go. That was great. We can see the sun through everyday life. We feel its warmth. Arguing the surface composition is more akin to asking what form God takes, but we don't see God in physical sense. Yeah, I'm not talking about whether the sun exists. I'm talking about the nature of the sun. But that's a, that's a good, good rebuttal. I appreciate it. Isn't this fun, guys? How many of you like this kind of stuff? How many of you say, nah, not my thing? I love, love philosophy. It's my favorite. Okay, uh, we're going to call this pickup. And we're going to call this midair dash. <laughs> Anders Edge loves it. That doesn't surprise me. Uh, okay, so we're going to call this midair dash. All right, grab it here. Stuff is amazing. Um, the secret: don't trust everything fully, especially when it explicitly tries to defy God. Man, that's an interesting comment. How do you know if it's defying God? Always throwing the devil's advocate out. Because a lot of people will be like, that defies God. And you're like, well, how do you know? Um, I'm not saying there is an absolute truth. I do believe in absolute truth. Just personally. Well, Nasty Hayuraya asked an important question. Does anybody have a rebuttal for this? If God exists, who created it? Can anybody, does anybody have a rebuttal for that? Okay, let's see how this sounds, guys. Good. By the way, Anders Edge, are you seeing the game feel stuff you and I have talked about in the past? Snappy. Snappy. Collecting things. Jumping. Fast. When we all die, we all get to be cows. God is an uncreated eternal being. Well, that's, I, you know, that's, I, it's a way to say it, but I don't know if that's going to answer the question. I don't think that that's sufficient. And I don't even know if I could give a sufficient answer. Okay, we've got the dash sound. Oh, we didn't even look at the, uh, the UI. Let's see if it's correct. Hot take. God isn't one being. It is the awareness of everything. It's all around us. That's more, isn't that um, more of an Eastern viewpoint? What is that called? Oh, good. We got it. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, um, what is that called? I don't personally subscribe to that, but it's called something. God does not really abide. This is from, oh, I can't read your name, sorry. God does not really abide to the casualty of the universe since God created it in the first place. Causality. Ooh, beautiful sentence. Mm. Chef's kiss. God does not really abide to the causality of the universe since God created it in the first place. I would even go so far as to say God created creation, meaning God created the concept of creation. 
So like every single concept you can think of, even the idea of one plus one, even the idea of one, even the idea of equal, even the idea of point A to point B, even the idea of an update, all of that created. That's what you go, whoa, if literally not even a concept, not even a, the concept of a concept can exist without something making it. That's what I struggle with. I'm like, how could nothing make something? It doesn't even, but they go, well, nothing didn't make something. It's actually the, the physical laws made things. I'm like, well, who made the physical laws? Who made math? It's really a, an interesting thought. Ahmed Khatib, thank you, Ahmed Khatib. That was wonderful. Okay, guys, so we've got our dash all done. What else? What else do we want to do? Oh, we want to do our spacesuit. So what we need to do is consider making a spacesuit. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's just do the UI at first. The spacesuit is our double jump. Right, So it's like Half-Life where you see a beautiful suit and then when you put it on, all it does is it allows you to sprint and move quickly. Um, <laughs> I think that's what happens in Half-Life. So we're going to do that here. First, we're going to do the, the icon. Um, so we're going to type in space suit, not sweet, space suit. How do you spell space suit? I think this looks kind of cool. Just a spacesuit icon. Oh, this is fun. Lentor says, the reason the concept of something creating God doesn't make sense to me is because create implies that something at some time created the thing. But if there was a God, it'd make, it would make time itself. Lentor, that's logos. That's what that is, that's logos. Am I wrong, guys? Please correct me if I'm wrong, that's logos. I could be wrong. I just love this stuff. I love talking about this stuff. I could talk about it all day. It makes me happy to talk about this stuff. And I love talking with people. I love talking with people who disagree with me about this stuff too. That's really fun. One of my favorite things to do is to disagree. Disagreeing is a lost art. What do you guys think? Yes or no? Disagreeing is a lost art. I love disagreeing. If there's a God, does that mean there's a correct way or natural way to live? If God created everything, why is doing anything a mistake? Well, I think that if the, a God, a God is allowed to create whatever he wants. So if he, if he makes a world where creatures have free will and those free will creatures make mistakes, does that mean God didn't intend that well if you wanted to create if you wanted to create creatures of free will then it's not a mistake here's another question this is a really important one why do you think god might want to create creatures with free will who knows the answer to this this one is super fun why do you think that if there was a god he would want to give you free will does anybody know who knows the answer to this Anders Edge, you might know this. Now let's not talk about whether there's free will. Let's talk about why might he want free will. Does anybody know? Solipsism? I don't know solipsism. Well, Cookie says, why can't the universe be an unmoved mover? Sure, if you want to call it an unmoved mover, but that's what God is. So you could say that you could redefine the term universe, but you're really, our definitions are equal, so therefore we believe in the same thing. Ah, yes, Reed Peterson, nailed it. Good, I love that. <laughs> D Decaf says it's more entertaining for him. Maybe. Um, no, love can't exist without free will. If you force somebody to love you, that's not love. Love's defined as, well, it's basically selflessness. So 
to be selfless requires the ability to say no. So if you wanted to create a community of people who genuinely engaged in love, you have to give them free will. It's kind of a necessary, in my opinion, it's a necessary ingredient. Like if I, if I went and like put a gun to somebody's head and said, love me, and they said, okay, that's a lie. They can't, if I, even if I flipped a switch and they started loving me, that's not love. Love is freely choosing somebody. That's what makes love beautiful. Okay, so we've got our helmet. What do you guys think? You think I'm crazy? We've got our helmet here. 680 by 248. That's, that's my hot take. I wish you could hold shift and move it straight down, but you can't. Okay, is our space helmet? Or uh, double jump. What is love? Yes, love is freedom to choose. Yeah. If there is a God, why do they care whether or not we love him? Why is loving them the right thing to do? Not loving God and such would be seen as a sin, would it not? Well, you tell me. If you had 10 kids, why do you care if they love you? Why do you care? Seriously, it's a serious question. You have children. Why do you care if they love you? Who cares? But of course, that's silly, in my opinion. When you create something, you crave if I created a, a creature, like my own children, and they didn't love me, it would break me to pieces. I would be broken for the rest. I would never let it go. Because they are a thumbprint of me. They are a reflection of me. They are, uh, what's the word? Made in my image. Does that make sense? Just my opinion. But it, I think that was a really valid question. It really was. I think that's great. Other people might say, why would God care what people think of him? Or why would God care what you think of him? So you can change out the word love from why, why would God care what you think of him? You know? Okay, Maddie says, by that logic, God is human or humans are God. Well, it's no surprise that even back to the... the even back to um, Roman and Greek philosophy, the idea of God being human-like and humans being God-like, that's not unique. Like, that, is, that has been an age-old suspicion. So, yeah, I think, I think that, personally, I think that humans are an imprint of, of this entity that's outside of time. The concept of free will, consciousness. In my opinion, consciousness is a, is a miracle. I, it's a miracle. It makes no sense. Um, okay, we apply these here. Thomas, quit talking. We apply these here. And we go to pick up. Um, what is it? Pick up our double jump. There it is. So there's our double jump suit. That's not a suit, Thomas. Those are, those are clown shoes. Yeah, we got to change it to a suit. So we're going to make this not Toon Shader, but Universal Render Pipeline. Set that back. Thomas, I think you're mistaking the ability uh, with, the, with free will with the ability to choose a specific, specific, specific option from an infinite range of possibilities. What's my uh, thoughts on psychedelics? Well, Bradley, there's two. I have three thoughts on psychedelics. Do you want to hear the first one? The first one is... I think psychedelics genuinely help people, okay? The second one is, I think that if you're trying to, to, I, to find a spiritual hack, I'd highly suggest finding the spiritual, going on the spiritual journey first before attempting to have the hack. I love the idea of growing through, through pain and suffering as opposed to just looking for some hack. Uh, attempting to connect to God or whatever you guys believe through meditation or prayer that's a difficult thing to do and it's a discipline that you have to force yourself to do I'd rather people learn how to do that than just take a mushroom or DMT that's just me though okay 
Collect sound is ability upgrade. What is this? I don't like that. Let's let's get a different sound. You guys ready? Let's get a space suit sound. Maybe we can find one. Thomas Brush, you put it into words. But love can be manufactured as evidenced by ecstasy. I don't know. That's, I think, what do you guys think about that? Love can be manufactured, just think of ecstasy. Man, is that love? It sure sounds like just a chemical reaction to me. But maybe, maybe love is a chemical reaction. I like that sound, we'll grab that one. Sugar Sore says that's not love. Is love a feeling or is it a noun? Or is love a verb or is it a noun? Is love a reaction? Is it necessarily a reaction? There's a lot of questions. And let's type in clothing. Not loathing, clothing. It's feeling. What does love look like? Love is laying down your life for somebody else. And you know, I know that's a cheesy thing to say, or it's like what everybody says, but I think it's the perfect definition because it means true love would do that. Otherwise, it's not love. If you genuinely love somebody, you would die for them. Okay, let's grab this. Grindstar Game says, Thomas, go play my game. No, we're talking philosophy. What are you talking about? Jeez, I got more important things. I'm just kidding, kind of. Okay, let's grab this. There we go. <gasps> Whoa, what happened? You don't get attracted to anyone on ecstasy. <laughs> Let's, you know, if you gave your children, all your children just really hated you, and for some reason you gave them ecstasy, would you feel like, like, would you feel good? Like, they finally love me. Man, this is great. It's like, no, they cheated. It's not real. It's fake. That's what love, lo true love feels good. Fake love never feels good. You're thinking about it from your perspective. I can feel love to somebody if I'm on ecstasy. But think about a person who's not on ecstasy. They're gonna be like, this doesn't mean anything to me. You know what I mean? Why would, the wor why would God make a world with so much pain? Even Reven, do you know who asked that question? The writer of the book of Job. And the book of Job is one of the first books of the Bible ever written historically. And God makes a bet with Satan. And Satan says, hey, if I take everything from Job, Job was a very wealthy man. If I take everything from Job, Job will reject you, God. And God goes, bet. And then Satan goes and takes everything from Job and destroys his life. And then the rest of the story, it's kind of like a play. The rest of the story, all these characters come into Job's life and they tell him why God did it. And so I love that book because that, even that book addresses that question. So it's not a profound question necessarily, and it's not a unique question. Everybody's been asking this question since the beginning of time. The answer is something like, well, this is how God answers at the end of the book. God says, did you make the universe? Did you make the monsters, like monsters of the sea, meaning like huge whales and Leviathan? Did you make this planet? No, I didn't. And he goes, then shh, be quiet. That's basically what he says. He's basically saying, I get to do what I want. It's kind of like me saying to my game, I get to do what I want. Um, so <laughs> that's, all the, that's the only answer I've ever said. Um, but I do believe that God works everything towards your soul's good. Not necessarily your body's good, but your soul's good. If you're willing to just say to God, hey, I want to I want, I want know you, I want to be with you, and you're willing to accept his grace, then he's like, cool, let's work toward everything towards your good. 
That doesn't necessarily mean that your life is going to be great or that you're not going to suffer, and then that, there's not going to be bad things. But ultimately, the end goal is your soul's benefit eternally. That was a mouthful. Pick up. What are we going to name this? Double jump. Your soul can't grow without pain. But there's also the component of free will. Um, a lot of people go, well, God didn't make the world, the, the, the earth bad. Um, people did because people have free will. I agree that people, if free will is true, people can destroy and make the world awful. The majority of bad things, in my opinion, are from people. But don't forget that the world is also very hellish in and of itself. Like disease and pain and hunger and thirst and drowning. I can't, I can't figure that one out other than just to give you the response I said, which is, well, God can do what he wants. It doesn't, just because the world is painful doesn't mean that he didn't mean for it to be. That's not a good argument. My game, look at this game. Guys, look at what I'm making here. This thing is dark. Look at this. Walker, pistol, look at this guy. Does this mean I'm a bad creator? No, I'm allowed to do what I want. It's my game. Does that make sense? That's the way I think of it, at least. But I, I genuinely do believe God cares about the world, and I, and I believe that He, um, I believe that He does want what's best. But I don't think He thinks about the world the way you do. Like you think about the world, like, oh, but what about this and what about that and what about this and I want to get that and I want this and I want to live longer and I want health and I want this person to love me. And he's like, I don't care about all that. I care about your soul. I care about who you are in here. I don't care about everything else. It's like if you were, if you, if you cut off somebody's hand, does that mean they're less of a person? No, not even by a, one percentage. So if you were to remove the entire body from somebody, does that mean they're less of a person? No. So what provides value to a person? Something in here. I don't know what it is. Something in there. And that's what God cares about. Does that make sense? That's, that's the way I see it. Okay, so this is double jump. This is going to be called um, something spacesuit. Let's come up with a name for the spacesuit. I know these are boots, but let's come up with something for a spacesuit. Okay. Um, uh, what do we call these? So it's going to be a spacesuit. The level you use these on is called saucer station. So we're going to call it saucer station. I'm just going to call it spacesuit. <laughs> Space Tron shoe. Well, it's not a shoe. Clown Toroid. Well, it's, again, we're going to change the graphic, guys. Come on, pay attention. This is double jump. Okay, good. Space suit, good. I'm going to make it 1.4. That's way too loud. Or maybe even 1.3. And this is pick up double jump. Yeah, we're going to make sure we apply these changes. And also the sprite is incorrect. We're gonna go to double jump. There it is. So there's our double jump. Um, saucer suit. Suit not sweet. Yeah, you're right, sorry. Okay. Um, solipism is the philosophical idea that only one's mind is sure to exist. I actually don't believe in that. Um, I actually believe that the body matters. Um, I know I said earlier that it doesn't. I, what I mean is I believe that God created human beings and that human beings are also their, their bodies, but it just because it's, um, oh man, how do I explain? I don't think the value of a human being is determined by his body. I think the body benefits the soul and that we're not, we're not just supposed to disregard the body. I think it's important. It's kind of like if, uh, if your dad got you a Porsche, and you're like, but dad, you just love me. You don't love the Porsche. So I'm going to go burn the Porsche. He's going to be like, what in the world? I just gave you a Porsche. Why did you do that? 
The same is true with your body. You should treat your body with respect and you should take care of it because it is a gift. Um, let's try it. Moon boots. Well, it's not a, we're not making boots, y'all. Pay attention. Cheese them. Crow. Okay, here we go. That felt great when I put that on. It's warm, too. All right, let's see if we can find ourselves some kind of space suit. We're going to go to Turbo Squid. And we're going to type in space suit vintage. I think this is great. We'll just re-texture re, uh, this and go for it. So 164 bucks. I think it's worth it. Worth my time. Oh, that's kind of cool. What, that's uh, Does that look vintage to you guys? <laughs> Just because it's cheap doesn't mean you should buy it. Um, that one's rigged. They're all rigged. Do we have a low poly one? No, we're going to localize, yeah. Okay, so that's 164. I'm going to buy it, y'all. Oh, good. We have one for 94 bucks, and I don't think it's rigged. I don't really care that it's not rigged, to be completely honest. Uh, let's look at the poly count. It's not horrible. Is it just 3DX Max? 3DS Max, Max, 3DS Max, Max Thomas. Um, okay, so let's move forward here. Um, that's Turbo Squid. What else are we gonna look at? We can look at Sketchfab. My screen. Okay, let's type in vintage spacesuit. That didn't give us anything we wanted. Goodness gracious. Just type in spacesuit. These are kind of cool. Why I would say I believe in God as it exists is, is that it's logically we can't have an infinite regress of events because then we would never end up having this conversation. Also, everything we know about is contingent, meaning it depends on something else for its existence. Therefore, there must be something which we call God that is a necessary being that started this chain of conting conti contingency. Despite the run-on sentence, I agree. I think. Okay. Vintage spice suit, yeah? All righty, let me, I'm ch sorry guys, give me just a sec here. Uh, sorry, I'm on checking Discord here. Um, we got to just pick something here. What about this one? This is not terrible, or is it? Let's double check. I kind of think it matches the game. Can we buy it? Cannot buy it. That's the problem with freaking Sketchfab. OK, we're just going to spend the money. OK. $164, my friends. Are we ready to go? Cha-ching! All right. Here we go. Guys, don't be afraid to just buy stuff. 
you got you got uh, limited time. I understand if you don't have the money, you, you shouldn't do it. I get it. Don't 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 hear me wrong. But if you've got the money, come on, make it happen. It's better than working three weeks on something. Come on, no, <laughs> Thomas. I can't open that. Uh, how do I? <laughs> It's C four D D, so it's a CAD file. Wonderful, Thomas, you just bit yourself in the tongue. Let's see if I can import it into Blender. Let's Google. Does anyone want to convert this for me? Import C four D file. I think that's a CAD file. I could be wrong. Into Unity. Importing objects from Cinema 4D. Ensure you have at least Cinema 4D installed. No. Okay, let's try this. Convert C4D to OBJ. Online. C4D to OBG, OBJ converter. Oh, Thomas. You might just be making a big mistake here, but let's try it out. How do you keep track of all your expenses? Every quarter I have a book, uh, I have books, and I send those books to my accountant, and that accountant sends it to a CPA, and the CPA determines our quarterly taxes. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see if we can import it into Blender though. Maybe we can. Maybe we don't need this uh, software. C4D. Hello? Nope. Maybe I can drag it in. We're going to wait for this thing, but I could get Felipe to maybe do it. Can you convert a C4D file for me? And we shall see. Because this is taking forever. C4D to OBJ. We can try this as well. Oh no, I gotta pee. I gotta go pee. Okay, that's about the only tool online. Oh no. Let's try this one. Sorry, one sec, guys. Oh no, it's taking forever. <laughs> well, well, well. Okay, he says he should be able to, so let's let's send this off to him. Give it a go. All right, he's gonna give it a go, y'all. So Felipe's going to give it a go here. Um, let's test this out and see how it feels, though. Okay, let's go and see how it feels. All right, so I just need to get that the spacesuit model converted here. And we'll see if he can do it. Um, also online, is it? Yeah, it's still going. Okay, what else we got? What else we got, guys? Today's tasks. Ammo UI. Ah, there's an ammo. There's some UI for the ammo that we don't have working yet. It is the pistol ammo. So what ammo do we not have? Ah, we don't have machine gun ammo. We don't have... So let's type in Tommy Gun. Guys, by the way, please, please do me a favor. Get yourself an Allen Project. It's this is worth it. Please get yourself an Allen Project. It'll save you so much time. Um, good. We got Tommy Gun Ammo. 
machine gun ammo, Luger ammo. It's really going to need to be a Magnum, actually, not a Luger. Um, so let's go to Magnum. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, let's go to Magnum here. Sorry, I know. All right. Throw on our color overlay. Ah, oh, gracious. Revolver. Duplicate, drag it up to our revolver. There we go. Okay, so we've got that is our revolver, and then why don't we just go ahead and create our fast pistol as well. Our fast pistol is a, oh, what's it called? Let's double check. Pistol pickup. It's a Makarov. What would you call this, guys? Just a regular handgun, I guess. Um, Yeah, just something simple. We're using Noun Project as our this icon library. It's great. It's just wonderful. By the way, we're just preparing this for alpha, so none of these are final, just so you know. Let's copy the layer style, delete, and then paste the layer style. Good. I probably need to make this a little bit more. Hmm. For some reason it doesn't look beveled and I don't know why. Whatever, um, not a huge problem. Okay, uh, are, are, we, are we missing any weapons here? Uh, there's the rifle. This really is a sniper rifle. So let's type that in and make sure it's correct. The orange gradient next to each weapon is where the text goes, like how much you collected. That makes sense. No, that's the shotgun. Oh no, that's the that's the pumpy right there. So we've got a pump action, and then we've got a double barrel. So let's make sure we match these, okay, guys? Now these aren't perfect. Why? Why aren't they perfect? Rep Who knows why these are not perfect representations of the actual weapons? Why am I doing this? Why am I not taking screenshots of the weapons themselves? Does anybody know? And we're gonna make this go up here as well, just like that. That's our pump action. Yeah, who knows why? Because it's UI and it needs to be more simple. That's right. No, I, I wouldn't call it a placeholder. I think we might use these simplistic icons. It's because when you make something really small like that, it's really hard to recognize it, and so these icons are designed to be small. Uh, that's that's why. Okay, so let's type in double barrel shotgun. <laughs> Cracker Jacks. We have to find our, our shotgun here, a good one. Oh, they all look bad. That one is not bad, actually. We could probably just use this one here. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. We're gonna make it smaller. What are you doing, Thomas? I'm making it smaller. Okay, I get it. Stop it. Where is this? Double barrel. And this is our pump action. It's gonna be hard to tell which one's which, isn't it, guys? Um, yeah, the pump action one as long as it's really small looking, I think we'll be okay. You know what I mean? I could be wrong. And we could even take this and like make it look really thick. Like, um, 
like this. And then do like a cut here. We may be fine. Yeah, I feel like it's okay. It's not the greatest thing, but I'm not... Honestly, as long as it communicates well, I'm fine. Yeah. With this one, we could also just do a little bit of a tip here. So we could take this off. Give me a sec. Ah, yes. If we could take this off here, it kind of works. OK, so we've got our pump action. We've got our full-on shotgun. We've got our sniper rifle. We've got our Tommy gun. Um, we've got our Tommy gun here. Felipe ended up using the same converter I was trying. Um, what else? Are we missing any weapons, guys? Oh, needler. We have a needler. What is that eye? <laughs> Um, the knee other is going to be difficult, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our weapon wheel. And in this case, for the weapon wheel, we're going to open this up. And we're going to go to the needler itself. It's called the wasp. This one in particular, we're going to need to use in the actual art because there's nothing, it's like a ray gun kind of, but it's just super unique looking. Felipe did a really good job on this. Um, we're gonna grab color overlay here, copy color overlay, paste layer style. There's our needles. And then we're gonna just type in, what do we call it? a thorn maybe? Or a needle. Okay, what do we got? Well, when you're in doubt, just check your weapon wheel. What do we got? We got a rocket launcher. We've got a sniper rifle. We've got a chain gun, shotgun, magnum, axe. Yeah, we've got everything. Wow, great. Save it out. Jump into Unity and let's just go ahead and go to our UI while we wait for this uh, suit. Oh my word, it's still still running, y'all. Error, great. Um, okay, well let's go ahead and request a um, file conversion. What order number are we? 5924119. Okay. Blender, please. What's the latest version of Blender, guys? Anybody know? I'll tell Felipe I'll have it converted. What's the latest version of Blender, eh? 4.02. What is it, 4.0 or 4.2? What is it? 4.02. Thank you. I need it ASAP. Okay, let's submit it. Um, 72 hours. Good grief. By the way, look at this. AI 3D generator. Gracious, we're screwed. We are screwed. Well, that's terrifying. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and go to our UI here. And just really quickly,
545 by 160. This is going to be our UI Tommy gun. Well, let's make sure our naming conventions are correct. Object info. Uh, automatic. What is this called? Automatic. Let's just call this. Man. This is really the chain gun. I'm going to call this automatic light ammo. Pistol, this is pistol light. Let's see here, this is pistol light, yeah. Sorry, our names are all off, but 545 by 160. UI. Pistol light, or pistol fast. The names are terrible. Um, this is our pump action shotgun. What is it? 545 by 160. And we're going to do object info, pump action, shotgun, ammo. One more, y'all. Yeah, good. 545, I hate doing this. <laughs> okay, uh, this is our um, wasp ammo. I also have to pee really bad. Is it apply here? And save. And then what we're gonna do is just go to our various pickups. We have our pickup ammo. Uh, there it is. We have all these different pickup ammos. So that's our automatic light. And so we need to change this to, uh, what did I call it? <laughs> what? What did I call it? I thought I just renamed it. Hang on, hang on. Ob automatic light. It's right there. You what? Why can't I find it? Whoa! It's got underscores on it. We don't want that. UI. UI. Okay, hit apply. <laughs> okay, you want me to ban them? Yeah, one sec. Are they ruining your uh, day? Yeah, hold on. Do I not have any mods? Anders Edge, can you ban them, please? Okay, so for some reason, <laughs> uh, there it is. Okay, um, so the thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna go to automatic, or ammo. We have our ammo pickups, save. Automatic light. And we're just going to type in automatic light. Double click. Automatic is automatic, default. The magnum is pistol. Needler, that's incorrect. So we're going to call this the wasp. Yep, there it is. Pistol fast. This is going to be. There it is. And then the pumpy. going to be this. Rifle, that's good. Shotgun. Let's just double check and make sure it works, guys. 
So for example, we'll do the needler here. It's not the right mesh. Pick up needle or pick up wasp. Pick up Thomas. There it is. Needler pick up. So let's grab this and see what happens. Uh Thank you, Tech Mac. Okay, so let's see here, guys. So if I grab the wasp here, that was the wrong pickup icon. Okay, so we need to fix that. And then needler. Good. Okay, so we don't have a pick. Mother effort. We don't have a the right icons for this. That will be the next task. That will be the next task. So, overall, well, overall, that will be the next task. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Be sure to check out the Black Friday sale for full-time game dev. This is a massive program. It's going to teach you everything I know about starting a game studio. I genuinely think that this, if, there, if you want to start a game studio, if you're really interested in trying your hand at not only making games, but selling them to a publisher for six figures, and you can do that with just a demo, or if you're interested in being a hobby game developer, or you want to do a Kickstarter campaign, or you want to do a, your own launch, this is the perfect program for you. It's got 4,000 students worldwide, incredible reviews. In fact, some of my students, uh, like Lord Grimm here, um, went full-time. Uh, he, he secured funding from a publisher. And also Chris, Chris down here, he went full-time as well. Look at this. About a year ago, I had no idea how to use Unity, and today we just hit $100,000 on Kickstarter. So surreal. Thank you so much, Thomas Brush. I am now officially a full-time game dev. What is real life even? This was amazing. I loved this story. Um, Chris and I are friends now um, because he took the course, and he didn't even know anything about games, which is crazy. Um, but, hey, not only are you going to learn the business side, you're also going to pick your poison, Unity, Unreal, or Godot. Whichever one you want to learn, Go ahead and learn it. So you're not, gonna not only going to learn the technical, you're also going to learn the business side of doing what I do, which is, look, making games for my, well, it started in my bedroom. This is my home office now. It's the best job ever. So check it out. It's pretty cool. 50 seats left, six days left. Genuinely the biggest sale event I've had all year. So if you're interested, check it out below, guys. I love you guys so much. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having a fun conversation too. I really, really enjoy philosophy and just being able to talk with you guys about that stuff. Any comments are welcome. I really, really enjoy it. Love you guys so much. Take care. Bye. Get over here. Get down. Hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important, hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. I love you too. Cheers. <laughs>